creativity is whatever is art to you. During the last year, Megan Macedo, who she spoke at our Truth Seminar, she made this distinction between the business builder entrepreneur and the artist entrepreneur. So the business builder entrepreneur is, maybe you could say they're a little bit like the in investment banker who doesn't particularly care what the business is. They're just interested in the process and the numbers and the, and the, the formulaic aspects of it. And in the circles I'm in, I find that probably 30% of the entrepreneurs are that type of an entrepreneur. But I find that 70% are more like their business is an expression of themselves and their personality. They couldn't just do any business. They need to do a particular kind of business. And there might be any number of businesses that they could do, but they can't just do anything. They need to do something that they're passionate about. And them doing their business is a way of them working out the questions that they have in their life, or it's using their artistic skills, or you know, being a writer, or being a subject matter expert, or something like that. And you know, somebody said art is science with more than seven variables. You know, it's like th there gets to a, a a point where there are so many things in play that analysis will no longer tell you what to do. Okay? And this could be this could be applied to anything. It could be the case if you're a chemist. It could be the case if you're a pastor. It could be the case if you're a nurse or a doctor or a dentist. There's but 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 there's there's a level at which it becomes art. I used to know the direct director of taxes at Amico. And he was, by education, a CPA. But I said, what do you do, actually? And he said, okay, so I got this $200 billion corporation, and we've got, we've got these patents and this intellectual property, and we have these refineries, and we have these oil wells, and we have all these different countries, and we have all these different people. And my job is to choreograph all of it and make the money disappear so we don't have to pay taxes on it. And I suddenly got it. It was like, this guy is an artist. And I realized that even being a certified public accountant at its highest level of practicing the profession, it's art, not science. Okay? And it's alchemy, not analysts. So think of art as what the director of taxes at Amico does. He's got all these attorneys, he's got all these scientists, he's got all these engineers, all these administrators, all these properties, all of these things that the company owns. How does he combine them together? There is no analytical formula for that. That's what creativity is. It could be how you play the guitar. Like, okay, if you're gonna play the guitar, First, you're gonna to have to learn the notes and the chords and the scales and, and the, the time signatures and all that kind of stuff, and the fingerings. And that's gonna be very boring and very mechanical. But there's gonna be a level at which, okay, now you know how to do that stuff. And when you get past that level, that's where creativity is. I'm probably a musician who never pursued music. I mean, I, I do play drums. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm all that great at it, but I really love playing. Um, and that's one of the things we do at Outer Space because there's always a, a jam session. But I went down the audiophile trail instead of the play musical instrument trail. And when I was 13, I started building a stereo equipment. And I found it quite fascinating. Um, and it's a very deep subject. It encompasses lots of things, including human perception. And I just got lost in that world. Well, I built myself a, a set of speakers and I put a stereo together. And the next thing I want to do is I want to try another set of ideas. And the only way to do that is to sell the first thing I made and use the money to make something else. And so, 
uh, I made my first sale at age 14. I, I made some speakers in shop class. I advertised them in the paper for 60 bucks, which was the first advertisement I ever bought. And a guy came over to my house and bought them. And like, well, that was Perry's first business. I remember my dad sitting in the chair, holding his newspaper, like just trying to be inconspicuous while we walked through. And then after the guy left, dad high-fived me like, hey, you know, good job, right? And then I was addicted. And then I had to do it again and again and again. So by the time I was 17, when, when my senior year in high school started, I was selling speakers in a store. I had a brand. I was next to other brands, you know, like B&W and Denon. And this became a lifelong passion. Um, and well, for three years, I actually designed speakers um, at a like a regular acoustics job. I designed the speakers in the Ford Probe, the Acura Vigor, the Honda Civic, the Chrysler Sirius Stratus, the Jeep Cherokee. But I found I don't want to be in the audio business. It's kind of a sucky business but it's a great hobby. And so after I was out of it for a while, the, the passion kind of came back. And, and so I've been building projects for a long time. I'd say about three or four years ago, um, I realized this is a major creative outlet and I had to give myself permission to just do it. Do it for curiosity's sake and for the sake of art not for the sake of, oh, I need something else to listen to, or, you know, like, well, what am I going to do with another pair of speakers? Well, give them to somebody, like, whatever. Um, like, just do it. I think people have to do this. Uh, some people really need to do this. Like, give yourself permission to indulge. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's riding your bike or your motorcycle, or maybe it's painting, or maybe it's writing romance novels, or you know, like whatever your creative, or playing the guitar, whatever your creative outlet is. Like I had to give myself permission. I mean, I, I can tell you, I shut it off in my, in my 20s. It was like, okay, I'm not gonna do this anymore. Right, I'm gonna nose to the grindstone. I got, I gotta buy diapers, and I gotta buy formula, and I gotta, like I don't have time for all that. Uh, maybe that was okay, I don't know. But at a certain point, it was like, no, like you need to turn that on. Now, there's some very interesting things about it. Well, for one thing, you know, this, this whole engineering systems thing that, you know, I went to electrical engineering school really because I was so curious. I wanted to, I wanted to know how it really worked. Like I knew how to buy books and magazines about the hobby and like stitch it together and get a certain result. But I didn't understand why it worked the way it did. It, I wasn't at the bottom of the swamp. I was just at the surface. That's why I went to engineering school. Then I, I came to understand like, how does it really work? Well, all the things I learned on the way of doing that ended up being immensely, immensely useful in Google ads and sales funnels and Facebook and all of that. In fact, you know, I can diagram it all the same way. It's like if I draw it out on a chalkboard, okay, here's an audio system, here's a sales funnel. It's like the same thing, okay? The other thing is maybe even more important. I've done amplifiers and signal processors and stuff, but mostly I've done speakers. Every single choice you make in a speaker design is a compromise. There is not anything you can do that makes one thing better that doesn't make something else worse. It's this thing where if you push the universe in over here, it pops out over here, okay? And the art of designing a great audio system is getting all of your compromises to sort of conceal each other. It's kind of like assembling a team to run a company because speakers are just like people. Speakers are incredibly imperfect. They all have flaws and they all have severe limitations. Okay. So the art of building a company is 
is getting all of these very flawed, dysfunctional individuals who have these combinations of incredibly great strengths and terrible blind spots and getting everybody to sort of dovetail together so you see everybody's strengths and you rarely see their downsides. It's the same thing when you design a piece of equipment. The better it is, like the more expensive it is and the more high-end it is, the more prone it is to betray itself. It, its vulnerabilities become more and more obvious. All of my art projects are parables for the other stuff in my life. If you said, so Perry, what do you value in a speaker design? I would say clarity, impact, timing, resolution. Um, I, I care that the timbre of the instrument comes through. So you should be able to tell, is that a Yamaha or a Steinway or a Baldwin piano? You can instantly tell just by the way it sounds because the three pianos are completely different from each other. Any, any musician knows this, but you should be able to instantly hear that. Well, if you took my whole list of adjectives that I would apply to that, well, they're almost identical to my values as a human being in the whole rest of the world. Okay, clarity is a huge one. Everything I do, like I try to make the murky, confusing, you know, forest for the trees problem, I try to fix that and people like, oh, I get it now, right? I mean, I get off on it, right? And I, I think everybody's gonna find that to be true.